Hello, it's the ghost. Welcome to Stranger World. If you're a fan of the strange but true happening in our world and the dark and mysterious goings on, then you are in the right place. All right, back in 1989, there was a man who I will call Stephen. He experienced a personal tragedy. He lost a child and was carrying around guilt for a long time and fear. He ended up seeing a therapist who encouraged him to write down the situation. You know, get the trauma out. Use the words to help relieve him of some of the heavy guilt and feelings he was experiencing. Now, the therapist is trying to help, doesn't know all the details of what's actually happening, knowing that Stephen lost his child, but the details remain fuzzy. I mean, was this child lost in an accident? Was it a health issue? Did the child die in the pregnancy? It was hard to get Stephen to talk about any of this, somewhat understandably, but if you want to work on your issues, like guilt, he knew that Stephen would have to get it out somehow, and so that's how the writing idea started. The therapist is satisfied with Stephen's willingness to try to get into this writing therapy, and Stephen's enthusiastic. After his meeting and the suggestion, he actually goes home and gets to it straight away. He starts writing the details of everything that went on during that tragic time way back when. He starts out with good intentions, but after getting it all out, Stephen really didn't feel any better. Instead, his guilt actually began to feel even more heavy. I don't know if any of you have been to a therapist, but a lot of times people seek the help of a therapist, but then they keep their certain things to themselves. So without full honesty, how can the therapist actually help you? And that's what happened here. Stephen kept secrets. He kept secrets from the world and his therapist about all of this, all of these things that had gone on. Even though he wasn't truthful with the therapist exactly, he did keep up with all of his writings. He knew that before his time was up, that he really did want to share the truth with anyone and everyone out there. And things would start happening around this later in 2019. So Stephen took all of his writings, his confessions, he called them, and posted his story. In his postings, he even refers to the movie, We Need to Talk About Kevin. I personally have not seen this, but according to Stephen, the son in that movie emerges as a psychopath. And he refers to this movie because he says their home life was much like that in the movie. His son was born in 1971, and from the beginning, he and his wife both knew that something was just not right. They were happy during the pregnancy, sure, and they were happy when the baby arrived. They were truly happy. There was no postpartum depression. There were no weird family things going on. They were just settled on having their son, and they showed this through all of their affections for him. But no matter how great they were to this little boy, their son always seemed discontent. He was squirming all the time and cried all the time for that whole first year, thinking maybe that their son had something physically wrong with him since they knew their home environment was as perfect as they could get it to be. They took him to a doctor. They even went to see a specialist trying to figure out what could be disturbing this little baby. Was it the food he was eating? Was he not getting enough sleep? I mean, what could it be? The doctors had a lot of ideas, but no real solutions to solve the problem because they couldn't really put their finger on what it was. So they, as a couple, new parents, Stephen and his wife, were getting worn out. They couldn't help but consider that it was something that they were doing, and all of it was exhausting. Their son never even smiled, so even though they worked diligently to resolve any issues, they were losing steam, and their son continued to be miserable. As time progressed, they did start to notice a few grins and things, but even though their son would seem happier for a moment, there were no happy moments. Stephen and his wife caught on to the fact that their son was only happy and only found joy when he was being destructive. This was not good, and starting to get pushed to their limits, the parents can't find any logical reasoning, and they're still looking within themselves to find out if they are causing all of this. They hold on to this belief for years, trying to find answers and solutions, but it never works out. Their son continues to grow, as kids do, but his behavior does not improve. It only becomes more obvious. They potty train him, for instance, but he still chooses to squat anywhere he pleases. And this trend never stops, even into his teenage years. 
This wasn't only randomly done on the floor, by the way. For some reason, he started to become obsessed with relieving himself in their parents' bed. I mean, could you deal with this? Even when they changed all the locks, they even changed doors to make them more sturdy and strong. Their son's behavior does not stop. With their bedroom, as an example, they replaced the locks and the doors to stop their son from going in, but instead, he just relieves himself right outside their door, and he gets worse. He takes to other types of outbursts, including violent ones that involve kicking and scratching. He even starts spitting on those that come around him. Stephen would later say that his son was like a wild animal, and all before he even hits double digits. He had been kicked out of schools temporarily, and then even expelled eventually. Even trying to put him in special schools didn't work. He simply would not get along with anyone. And on top of the fact that he was seen as violent and threatening, when would he turn inward towards the parents? I mean, not only were they trying to handle and figure out what was going on with their son, they were getting new issues. New things were arising over the years as time went on. Instead of their son only being violent to things and strangers, he turned on them as well. So now he's too dangerous to be around any other children or any other people or them. He is now a threat to his own parents, and that got worse as well. He starts going for the knives at home. He tried to take the knives from all the neighbors, even. He would try to stab his father, Stephen. Got him more than once. Stephen still has the scars. Their son started working his way out of the house with his aggressions and turned to local animals, like dogs and cats in the area. Between the doctors and the parents, it seemed like there was a whole team trying to get this kid under control, but all their efforts only led to medications and even meditation. They tried all kinds of ideas and were open to anything, but they never found that good solution. The child just seemed to get more angry with every day that went on. He was extremely aggressive and violent, and this went on and continued until there was a point when Stephen and his wife no longer thought they could do anything about it. As the parents were giving up on the situation, they basically were feeling like prisoners in their own home with their son as the warden. Instead of using the new locks they had installed on the doors in the house to keep their son away from things and people, they were now using those locks and doors to keep their son away from them locking themselves in different rooms. And can you imagine anything more terrifying? You would be sad and scared at the same time. All of this, however crazy it sounds, in all of this, life does continue. And eventually, Stephen and his wife become pregnant again, if you can believe it. Of course, they wanted to be happy about that, but they're also very scared at this whole idea. They didn't know if they could handle another child, and certainly not one if it turned out like their first one. They just couldn't handle the pressure. And they even talk about stopping the pregnancy. But eventually, they decide that they can't do that. And they want to go through with it. But they do make a deal with each other that if their child turns out like their first one, they're going to have to give it up for adoption. So time goes on, the pregnancy progresses, and they end up having a daughter this time. And in the beginning, so far, so good. I mean, she seemed normal. They couldn't believe that they had a regular baby on their hands. She was taking to her feeding schedule, her sleeping schedule. This daughter was a joy and a relief. So when this happens, take note that their son was now 16 years old. So a lot of years had passed. They had lived with this for a long time. But they actually see it, these parents, as a good thing. And they see the hope in it all. I mean, as this baby grows, their son will be moving out. After all, he'll be 18 in two years. So that's what they're thinking. This is their plan. But of course, their son doesn't love it. They would fight for hours, screaming with each other, going nowhere in this time. The son would leave for a while, and then he would suddenly return. All of the stress on the parents, and it stayed this way for the whole next year. But that's when tragedy would strike again. Okay, so picture this. Their son is still the way that he is, and he's coming and going all of the time. Their daughter is normal. She's now one years old. This family lived in a bungalow-style home. Their daughter had her regular room. There's a window in it. Nobody's thinking anything about that. But then there comes another day of extreme and intense arguing with their son, 
And then he eventually just storms out, leaving the situation. And Stephen and his wife are glad. They take a moment to catch their breath. And then all of a sudden from their daughter's room, who she's in there, they start to hear screaming. And this little girl is screaming as loud as she can. And the couple realizes this is not a regular cry. This is an urgent and terrified cry. Well, they run down the hall to get into their daughter's room, but they find it locked from the inside. They did this, remember, to keep themselves from their son. So they have to go into the kitchen, find the keys, and they eventually do make it into that room. But what they find was immediately terrifying. Their son had made his way back into the house through their daughter's room, through her window, and he's now standing there, and he's got a knife. And he's holding the knife to her face. And not only is he holding it there, he's been jabbing her with it a bit. Right there in her face. Stephen and his wife are taking this all in. They're horrified. And they start to notice more, like the blood that's already running down her body. Well, the parents, their instincts kick in. And they immediately both run over to split the two up. And the wife actually gets there first. She is able to get to her son, shoving his hand away from their daughter, and then pushes him. And he falls to the ground. At the same time, Stephen gets to their daughter, who is still in her crib. He turns to look back at his son, who's on the floor, and all he can think is, what an animal he is. Maybe he's even just alien. His behavior is just too much. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is that Stephen's wife had been a longtime trainer, and she's actually good at all the kickboxing and boxing things. She's able to smash her son down, literally by hitting him and then she's kicking his legs when he tries to get back up and in doing all of this she actually breaks his nose and she wasn't stopping well not sure what to do Stephen grabs the baby and he leaves the room his first thought was to get his daughter out of the way but he didn't even think about how things would continue to progress in his daughter's room and he wouldn't think much he wouldn't think about it They had their son this whole time, and they were never physical with him. They never hit him or did anything like that. That's just not the kind of parents they were. However, Stephen, now out of the room, is just overly disturbed. He hears his son yelling. His son is even screaming. This is his son, not his wife. While Stephen's putting Band-Aids on their daughter and calming her down a bit, his son is being rendered unconscious by his wife. His wife was continually kicking him in the head. And now Stephen's thinking to himself that, yes, he hears his son in pain. Yes, he should go back in and check it out. I mean, his son could die. Will he die? He's thinking, yes, he could go back in. But what does he do? Nothing. In a way, Stephen's thinking, would it really be a bad thing if his wife killed his son? Would she stop? Should he stop her? He's frozen. He can't really do anything. And he stays that way until his wife comes back out of the room. And she's looking a bit like she's gone mad. And she's covered in blood. Her hands are cut. And things are beginning to swell. She walks out. She doesn't say a word. Instead, she takes a seat at the kitchen table. She looks up to Stephen. And all he can say is, is our son dead? His wife won't even say yes or no. Instead, she just says, I hope so. And then in her dazed and confused state, she goes in to take a shower. Left alone, Stephen cautiously ventures into his daughter's room to inspect what happened. And he does find his son. He's bloody. He's covered in bruises that are coming to the surface. His face is swollen. Stephen walks up to him, looking him over, but he doesn't say anything. I mean, the boy's gurgling. He's obviously wet his pants even. But Stephen does nothing. In his heart, he'll admit to you now that he wanted him to die, even though he knows he should be calling for help. But he doesn't. There will be no ambulance. Even when his wife gets out of the shower, they do nothing. Nothing about their son, at least. What they do do, in sort of a crazy state, is gather up their items that they use on a daily basis, and they move everything to their basement, which is set up like an apartment. Like I said, they were pushed to the max, and they're rationalizing this, saying that their son will just find them when he's better, when he is able to get up and about. Well, about a month later, these guys, this couple, they're living, working, tending to their daughter, and life is going on. Out of nowhere, they start to hear movement upstairs. They also hear screaming and punching of the walls and things. The couple just listens. When their curiosity finally does get to them, though, they venture upstairs and they find walls busted, items broken, something's wiped and smeared all over the walls. What they don't find is their son. 
Had he just destroyed all that he could and just took off? Then what? Would they wonder where he is and be afraid of his return the rest of their lives? And this brings us all the way up to 2019. There's the dad posting his story, trying to share his pain and misery with others that could be going through the same thing. He talks about his wonder, though, his constant worrying that their son will come back and kill them. With every day they go on, they have to continue to wonder, where is their son? Did he get over his issues? Maybe he's fine now. Or did he go on to do more bad things? They just don't know. All Stephen will say in the end is that yes, his son could be out there causing destruction and pain to others, but all he can do is hope. Hope that his son was able to come to terms with his issues and overcome the demons and thoughts that were working to destroy him. But he'll admit there is the other side. Stephen is well aware that if he had kept going the way he was and lived through it all, it's very possible that someone else has maybe had enough of his behavior and took him down. So is his son dead? Or is he out there causing issues? Is he out there feeling his own guilt, trying to live a good and regular life at this point? And until or if this son returns, there's just no way for them to know. So they'll go on about their days forever wondering. What do you guys think? This happens more than we realize. The trouble that people finally run away from but where do they go? What do they do then? We have a good versus evil here like we do so many times. Let me know your thoughts. And if you like this story and stories like this, be sure to let me know so that I can post more of them for you in the future. And thank you for listening today, guys. And I will talk to you all soon. <laughs>